Hello again. Number three is where we're going to start in section 2.3 uh, with our sample problems. So we're given the equation y equals 3x. It's telling us, um, oh, it just wants us to graph it and to compare it to y equals x. So just a quick graph here, y equals 3x. This is in slope-intercept form. Um, basically, if it's solved for y, if y is by itself on one side and everything over on the other side, and you have a number times x plus another number, we could put 0 here, then it's in slope-intercept form. This would be the slope. Right? This is m, the slope, and this is b, the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is 0. It's right there. The slope is 3, or 3 over 1, which means we go up 3 and over 1. And there we have our line. Compare it to y equals x. Okay, So y equals x is one that goes up 1 and over 1, also has a y-intercept of 0. So how do they compare? They look a lot the same. They both go through the origin, um, but our line, the 3x line, is steeper. So if we were going to compare it, we could say it's steeper. All right. Easy enough. Let's do number 4. y equals negative x. All right. So uh, negative 1 times x plus 0. So the slope is negative 1 or negative 1 over 1 plus 0. Y-intercept of 0, up 1 over 1. And there's our line. Um, and now we want to compare it to y equals x. And y equals x is the one that starts at 0 and goes up 1 over 1. So it looks like that. So how do they compare? They both go through the same y-intercept. And this our, ours that goes this way, it doesn't seem any steeper, but it does go the opposite direction. So uh, we could say it's uh, a similar slope. right? It's not any uh, steeper or any less steep, uh, but it falls where y equals x rises. So that'd be a comparison. And a good one, I might, I might add. Y equals negative 3x plus 2. So uh, again, since it's solved for y, this is going to be our slope, and this our y-intercept. Slope, y-intercept. Y-intercept is positive 2, so it goes through the y-axis at positive 2. And our slope is going to be negative 3 over 1. So instead of going up 3, we'll go down 3. 1, 2, 3. And to the right, 1. Right. And there's our line. And we're going to compare it to y equals x. Here's y equals x. So y equals x is this one that goes off at like a 45 degree angle, we would say. We're pretty familiar with that terminology. So our line, negative 3x, well, uh, 3 is bigger than 1. The slope of y equals x is 1, and this, the slope of this is a negative 3. So the steepness, it's steeper. And um, we may say higher uh, because it has a, a y-intercept that's at 2 rather than 0. So that might be something we would say about uh, the comparison between the two. Um, moving on to number 13. OK, we're just supposed to graph this. Uh, it's in y-intercept, uh, or sloped-intercept form. So y equals 4x minus 1. So we've done this a few times already. y-intercept of negative 1. There it is right there. Slope of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. There we go. So there is our line. 
And that's it. That's all it's asking us to do, just to graph a line. Um, let's jump down to number 20. And this is y equals 3x minus 1.5. So this is a little bit of a weird decimal here, but we can do it. Uh, Y-intercept of negative 1, not 2, not negative 2, but negative 1.5. So there we go there. And a slope of 3, or 3 over 1. So 1, and we'll put some marks here. Okay, so it goes up 1, 2, 3, and over 1. And there are our two points. And there's our line. Okay, so that's graphing in slope intercept form ad nauseum. We've graphed a lot of those. Uh, 23. This is the kind of a thing you would see on a standardized test, um, multiple choice. So the question is for 4x minus 3y equals 18 is a, b, c, or d in y-intercept form, slope-intercept form. Uh, remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, slope, y-intercept. So in order to get this into slope-intercept form, we need to get y by itself. So to get y by itself, let's subtract 4x from both sides. That would help us along. Negative 3y equals negative 4x plus 18. And now get y by itself. We just need to divide that negative 3, cancel it out. So y equals 4 thirds x minus a 6. So here we have our slope and our y-intercept, m and b. And we look down at the choices. We want 4 thirds x minus 6, and that is c. That's 23 for you. 24. x minus y equals 4. Okay, we want to find the x and y intercepts. Okay, so on a graph, just this isn't this necessarily, but if we were to draw a line, this would be our y intercept. We're used to that. That's where the, the line intercepts the y axis. And this would be the x intercept, where it intercepts the x axis. So we want to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. This point would be where we have a 0 for x, and we're not sure what it would be for y. And here we would have, we're not sure what it would be for x, but it would be 0 for y. Okay, so for finding x-intercepts, well, we want to know when x equals 0 and y, when y equals 0. That's basically it. So if x equals 0, then we are just left with negative y equals 4, which means y equals negative 4. So y equals negative 4. How about if x equals, or if y equals 0? If y equals 0, then x equals 4 is all that's left. So that was really easy. Okay. So those are the two y intercepts at 0, negative 4, or not the two y intercepts, the two intercepts. This is the uh, y intercept and this is the x intercept. Okay, uh, so that's that's intercepts, finding intercepts, and that is how we're going to graph things that are in this form, standard form. Remember that from the last video. Thirty-one so x plus four y equals eight. When it's in standard form, we uh, we could put it in slope-intercept form, but that would be kind of tedious since it'd be really easy to find a couple of points real quick if we let x be 0 and y be 0, and uh, we have two points. So if x is 0, then it's left we're left with 4y equals 8 and y equals 2, so y is 2. And if y is 0, then we are left with x equals 8 and nothing else to do because x just equals 8. So we have two points, one at 0, 2. 
so there's a point, and one at eight comma zero. Right there, and there is our line. Okay, so if it's in standard form, which this is, uh, where the x and y are over here together, and there's just a number over here, that is standard form, and we just put in a zero for x and a zero for y. That's the fastest way that you're going to find a couple of points so you can graph the line. Um, and next, number. 36. Let's do 38 instead of 36. Negative x minus y equals 6. We're going to graph this equation as well. So let x be 0 and y be 0, and we'll have two points. So if x is 0, we're left with negative y equals 6, and y equals negative 6 negative 6, and if y is 0, we're left with negative x equals 6, and x equals 6. So we have at 0 comma 6, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 6 comma 0. There you go. And there's our line. Alright, and this next part is uh, a really important, useful skill to choose the method that you want to use based on what's, uh, what you want, what's easiest, what's fastest, what, whatever criteria you want to use. Uh, I would say let's pick either standard or, or slope-intercept form that we're familiar with, get it to one of those forms, and graph it that way. So this one to me, it looks like it would be just as easy to get it into standard or slope-intercept form, but I prefer slope-intercept form. So I'm going to divide both sides by 6. So y is equal to 3 sixths x plus 6 over 6. That's 1 half x plus 1. I like that a little more because that it's in the form, and now I have pretty much everything I need. I have the slope, and I have the y-intercept and the slope. There's the y-intercept. Slope is up one over two, and that's all I needed to graph my line. That's why I prefer it. Um, you can get it in the standard form, but then you have to plug zero in for x and zero in for y, and find the points. And it seems a little longer to me. Um, let's do another where we're going to choose which form we use. 50 is like that. 3.5 x equals 10.5. Well, this one is pretty easy. We can see there's only an x, so we might as well find out what x is equal to. So x equals 10.5 over 3.5, because just divide both sides by 3.5. That clanging around is me getting my calculator. 10.5 divided by 3.5 is 3. So x is 3. Let's just write that again. x equals 3. So if x equals 3, what kind of a line is that? It's a line that always has x being equal to 3. Let's find where x is equal to 3, just really quick. Uh, right there really simple x equals 3 if this were just a simple number line that's where x equals 3 would be okay so we know that x equals 3 here where else is x equal 3 over here no not over there uh, not over there or over there only here in this uh, region only does x equal 3 so all of the points here vertically have x being equal to 3 so just a reminder that x equals 3 is a vertical line. And as a, a quick reminder, y equals a number is a horizontal line. Not a bad thing to remember. Um, and last of this kind, 52. 14 minus 3x equals 7y. So 
um, seeing as it looks about equal uh, to get to either slope intercept or standard form, I'm going to choose to go to to uh, slope intercept form. So you get 14 over 7 minus 3 sevenths x equals y. So 2, and let's, uh, let's put this all in order in a second. 2 minus 3 sevenths x equals y. Let's go with y equals negative 3 sevenths x plus 2. It just looks like we're used to having it look. All right. So here is the y-intercept and the slope. So the y-intercept is 2. And the slope is negative 3, 7. So down 3, 1, 2, 3. And over 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There we go. And there's our line. We chose to go to y-intercept for slope-intercept form. Now, let's do a word problem. Uh, let's get rid of those marching ants, as they were called when I was learning computers. Um, so this is problem number 60. OK, and this is a real thing, this camping pass thing, at least uh, for national parks it is. Uh, I think it's for all national parks. You can pay an annual fee and you can camp at all national parks and it's a pretty cool deal. Uh, and if my geography is good, which it isn't, uh, Glacier is like, you know, in Montana. I'm not even going to try to guess where Glacier is. It's in Montana somewhere. So somewhere in here, Glacier-ish, um, you know, you can camp there or you could camp in uh, in other national parks here and and maybe there's one over here and uh, and here and, and so on. So you're allowed to camp in all these places and you don't have to pay every time you go. You only have to pay an annual fee. Um, and this isn't exactly the pass we're talking about because it doesn't work exactly the same way, but um, you apparently you can buy a membership to, maybe it's a KOA more like, and you can camp at all these different campgrounds um, every year if you pay the annual fee. So the equation that tells us how much we're paying after so many years is y. Okay, so y is that uh, when we get a number for y, um, then that's going to be the amount we've paid. Um, it equals 5x plus 35. Okay, where x is the number of years you've been a member of this uh, campground membership. So, to to a nature society. So, however many years you've been part of this nature society is X. And once you plug in that number, you'll know how much you've paid after so many years. So, let's say after uh, you've been um, a faithful member for five years. So, five years have gone by. Let's just make a, a table here. So five years. After five years, how much money have you paid? Uh, well, we'll just put a 5 in there. y equals 5 times 5 plus 35. And so y equals 25 plus 35. And y equals $60. So after five years, you'll have paid $60 uh, at, to be a part of this nature society. Um, so what the question is asking us to do um, is to graph the equation and talk about what's the significance of the y-intercept and the slope. Okay, so graphing this equation, which tells us how much we pay after so many years. Well, this will be the slope inter or the the y-intercept. So we'll go um, maybe in fives: five, ten, three, four, five, six, seven. There's thirty-five. 35 what? 35 dollars. 35 dollars when? 35 dollars at the beginning, right? We're going to let x be time and we're not going to go back in time. We don't have a DeLorean. So we are going to go forward in time. So 35 dollars from the very beginning. So before you even do anything, 
before you ever camp any place, you will have paid $35. So that's maybe your initiation fee or your upfront cost or whatever you want to call it. Um, so that would be the significance of the 35. So this would be upfront. Okay. And the slope is uh, 5 or 5 over 1. So we'll go up five, and these tick marks are in, in fives. So we'll go up five and over one. The x will be on a different scale. You'll go over one there. And then we'll go up five dollars and over another year. And we'll go up another five dollars and up and over another year, and so on. Okay, so. And that's really irrelevant because that's if you had a DeLorean and go back in time. Um, but as each year goes on, uh, goes by, we'll pay another five dollars, another five dollars for another year, another five dollars for another year. So what's the significance of the slope? Significance of the slope is the cost per year. Every year that goes by, you will pay five more dollars. Okay, so. Um, and that's that's all there is about that so thanks for watching